That's twisted. This is Mark McNeese in New York City with my co-host Rick Rose in Shreveport, Louisiana. And you're listening to The Twist. Welcome back, everybody. It's been a while, but here we are. The Twist, America's only clothing optional podcast. Now, my co-host, Rick Rose. Where are you at today, Rick? Shreveport? Shreveport, Louisiana. Yes. Yeah, just like it says in the opening. Now, I'm going to have to change that opening pretty soon because... I'm not going to actually be in New York City most of the time. My uh, husband and I are moving out to our house in New Jersey. It's going to take a few months, but eventually, it w- I can't honestly say this is Mark McNeese in New York City, and we'll deal with that when the time comes. Now, and as you know, we travel a lot, so you never know where I'm going to be when I'm calling. But hey, I recorded something here. Listen to this. You listening? Yeah, I'm listening. We're back, Mark. Oh, does that what it says? We're back. I like that. Cool. I know. I'm trying to be especially effective like you, but I have to perfect how to play it on our podcast. But yes, we're back, and I'm excited. Well, we are back. It's been we've been in the deep freeze for uh, several months for various reasons. But um, a big reason that you know we brought this back is that I am no longer tied to an office cubicle, which has been a glorious thing for me. Yay! Um, I have so much time, but you know, a lot of people will tell you when they don't have that, that nine to five job anymore, they don't know how they got everything done when they were working. And that's so true because I'm up at five o'clock still, sometimes four this morning was four o'clock and I'm just rolling till, you know, 11 o'clock, 12 o'clock. And, uh, I don't know how I did everything I did. Um, but that's one of the reasons that I wasn't really able to focus on the podcast. Now I am and the twists are coming back at you. It's crazy, and you can find us on Twitter, you can find us on Facebook, and what I love about our schedules, Mark, I mean, we're only an hour ton difference, but you're more that morning guy, I'm more that late night guy. So I went and posted something on the Twist podcast last night before I went to bed, which was really 3 o'clock my time, and looked at you had posted something five minutes before, which was Oh, that's right. We, we, that's happened yeah, to us so, so many funny. times. I'll be like in bed, and I'm thinking, nobody's up this <laughs> early, and there's Rick Rose. Going to bed. Prism yeah, Award I, winner, a, uh, Activist oh, of the Year, yeah. all kinds of stuff. Jeez, and, it's um, been a good year that way, yes. We've had good, some good successes with us and with our friends, too, man. Lots of good stuff out there. Absolutely. And the twistpodcast.com is our website now. We have a, um, a growth, what's it called? A growth campaign. Yes, between now and the end of the year, we want to get... Uh, 100 new subscribers. Well, we want 300 new subscribers by the end of the year. So I'm going to say 100 new subscri- email subscribers a month. And what they're going to get is they're going to get the twist every Sunday, plus the good stuff that's on the website. The podcast is now, this is another big change for us. It's not just the podcast. The twist podcast is our flagship and the thing that's, right. that so many, many, many people uh, clamored for us to bring back. But on the website now too, we've got news. We've got all kind. We've just it's it, the website is now like more of a blog, and the podcast is a a primary feature of it. But go to the twistpodcast dot com. The first giveaway that we're doing because we know people love free stuff. I mean, I don't want to make it sound you know in an, any sort of negative way, but free things are great, and we're going to be doing raffle copter giveaways uh, a couple times between now and the end of the year. Just to say thank you for people signing up, and they will be required to sign up to get the giveaway for our email subscriber. They'll get a, they'll get the uh, the once weekly Sunday uh, thing, and I want to be really clear to folks because I've done this with LGBTSR.org for six years. We don't use your emails for anything nefarious. You don't get spam from us. It's strictly so that every Sunday you'll get an email with new content and a fabulous podcast. The first giveaway, and then I got I know I'm going on a long time here, Rick. Well, you, you got to be queer with people, like you said. Be as queer as you can be with people. Oh, you said clear with people. Clear okay. with people, yeah. absolutely. But, so but the queer too. First giveaway. The first yes. giveaway is up there now. It starts tomorrow, actually. But there's a post about it. It's um, it's it's ten signed copies of uh, my new mystery, Yay. the Detective Linda Yay. mystery, Last Room at the Cliff's, Cliff's Edge. It's five stars all the way so far, and uh, it's going to be coming out as an audio book at the end of the year. But for twist subscribers only and this is the then we'll get into our show uh if you e- if you email subscribe to the twistpodcast.com the first 10 to sign up the, the next 10 starting tomorrow will be getting a free kindle edition of this book i love it mark and the cover is great you'll see that on the kindle too you don't have to hold it in your hands but i want to quickly shout out to ken 
Courtney. They're part of the reason we came back. I'm not sure they're subscribers, but they've listened to us every week and wondered where we were. And then also my friend Taryn. Now, Taryn, I don't know if you subscribed yet, but you came to my office yesterday and said how you love listening to podcasts. I thought you were hearing music in the back there while you were working, but she's listening to podcasts, Mark. So she will subscribe, and she needs her very own copy of your recent mystery novel, which is often rising to number one in Amazon. You've hit the number one Amazon chart many times for for gay uh, mystery. Yeah, in my previous books, I've, I've twice I've been the um, number one LGBT mystery, just so people know. You know, I'm not There's saying lesbians. That, yeah, yeah, yes. it's it, there are niches, and I'm working on a straight one. I'm working on a mainstream series that's, that's going to be a really, really popular series. Now, you ready for the show? I'm ready for this show. Could I be any more ready, Mark? Do you remember the bell? Yes, yes, and you're you're in charge of the bell. The bell takes us from topic to topic, folks. Kind of a similar format to those of you returning, and we're going to start with some. Some red lines, and I love them. What you called them the other day. There are often some dread lines in the red. Dread lines, yeah. I'm gonna I'm gonna keep calling them the weekly red lines because that's really only on the twist now, and um, <clears throat> and then there'll be, of course, I've, I'll be adding my fun sound effects that you had somebody that said she listened for the sound effects. So yeah, I know it's awesome. Here we go. Yes. And, and I'm gonna I'm gonna surprise you because as you make your red line readings, I'm gonna get some commentary, which you like, but some of my commentary might about my very own sound effects. We'll give it a try. See yeah, what do we say? You're you're my Andy you're Andy Richter to my uh, Conan. So okay, here we go with the red lines. Uh, studies show that gender specific food marketing affects the way food tastes to us and the things we crave. Now uh, I, that didn't seem obvious to me, but a, a majority of food commercials clearly show that what we consume is heavily gendered. Marketers exploit specific traits of masculinity and femininity to make food appeal to us. Yogurt and certain types of breakfast cereal are branded as healthy, light, and slimming. Uh, seeing, see uh, Miss uh, Universe. While energy drinks and crunch wrap supremes are branded as powerful and strengthening. You see all the guys with the power bars. Uh, inside the landmark, <coughs> there, I'm sorry, there's a landmark overdue study on chest binding. Now, if you don't know what chest binding is, you don't know too many trans men. Um, maybe you don't know any, but chest binding is, is specifically with transgender men, but not only them. There are also other people who are just gender queer and gender fluid, but they'll, but they'll bind their, they'll bind their breasts, you know, anatomically people who were born anatomically female will so often bind their breasts, <coughs> especially. If, what is that? I'm telling you what. <laughs> Go ahead. Okay. I'll give you a comment. If I had a minute between the last story, here's what I would have given you for commentary. <laughs> Go like, ahead. That's like eating stuff. Yes, it is. But chest binding, it's it's amazing. Yeah. So, anyways, there's, there's a new there's a new study about it and how to educate, um, especially healthcare, you know, providers and doctors on this how to safely do it and all of that stuff. So, um, Judge Roy Moore, one of our big one of our big um, heroes in Alabama. He's uh, been brought up on charges for the second time. <laughs> Hopefully he will not be the Chief Justice much longer. Uh, for the second time in 13 years, he, the Deep South jurist was urged, uh, he urged probate judges across the state, this is going back to the Oberfell ruling, um, not to issue marriage licenses to same-sex couples. And this last Wednesday he stood trial on charges of violating the canons of judicial ethics. Let's hope he's removed and stays removed. President Obama nominated the first ambassador to Cuba in over 50 years. On Tuesday, he nominated um, the first ambassador in more than half a century, defying opponents of his policy of reproachment with the government of President Fidel Castro. And by the way, by the way, Trump <clears throat> Trump violated. Um, the embargo. There's a whole news item about that. Oh, I mean, God, that's they're really coming out with stuff about Trump because they're pissed. And I guess we can they get into to. that later. But because he played the media for so long. And then this two weeks ago when he did that little announcement about, um, you know, saying Obama was born in the USA, he got an hour's free infomercial for his new hotel because he made all the reporters sit there and wait and listen to people get up and say glorious things about him. And the media was pissed, really pissed, because they've been played so many times, especially the TV people. And I predicted they're not not—they're coming at him. They're coming at him, and they have. Thank God it's about time. Speaking of Donald Trump, he fortifies his anti-LGBT positions and taps Rick Santorum as an advisor. I will be talking about that in my hot topic oh, about queer voters who seem to think that Trump is an acceptable 
nominee. Um, I'm also going to be talking about, in my final thoughts, the um, Black History Museum. Um, and there's there's really good stuff about that that just recently opened in D.C. Yeah, um, thank God Trump's not in charge of that back in 1973 because he wouldn't have let the black folks in to see their history. You know, right, and there's been all this racist pushback about it, and that's going to be my final thoughts for today. Um, we're almost. I done. watched. I watched. It actually, I know, but real quick, I watched it on BET. They uh, they broadcast it live, and it was awesome. The dedication, but yes, keep going. Red right on. Well, we're almost done here. Chris Christie hopefully will be impeached over Bridgegate. He bye knew, bye. He knew what they were doing. Um, yes, because we're moving to Jersey. I really don't want to spend too much time with him as the governor of this, of because Jersey is a beautiful state. I love, love, love New Jersey, and it's just such a a scar on the state. That he's the governor and then near the end of the debate i just put the printed this out um because i wanted to include it you had you had donald trump on national television 100 million people watching once again you know being vicious toward rosie o'donnell you know she gave his oh his, my god that was awful. she gave him up a long time ago he's so vindictive and vengeful and revengeful um, but there he was saying shit about her again. He's just a he's just a creature from a swamp, and I hope to God he's not our president. And Howard Dean thought he was doing coke, so that's my last one. Well, everybody thought that, but you know, Rosie came back and referred to him as an orange body part. I don't know. If you Anus. Guys we that, can. But... This is the twist. We're explicit. Oh right, fuck that. We can... Yes, she did. And Madonna defended her too. I love that. Madonna says, "No one touches my Rosie." Back off. Oh my God, was she, was that a play on words? No one touches my Rosie. Uh, oh yes but yes I'm, I'm glad they're all speaking up i think you're right we're gonna get into it but i think he's you know we we thought he'd implode during the debate he basically did but the implosion is really happening now um uh, and we'll get into it but the washington post i mean not the washington post the usa today which is my like ship parent ship i work for a, one of the 112 papers of the usa today as we know 34 years and have never endorsed a presidential candidate well yesterday they didn't come out with an endorsement for hillary but they certainly came out and said he is unfit to be president. That's big news, Mark, when you have an organization like USA Today, bigger than CNN, saying, unfit, don't vote for him, and here's why. Well, it is, and we've also, there have been all these conservative newspapers who I applaud because they're showing integrity. They're showing that Amazing. they actually care about this country more than they care about partisanship. They're losing subscribers because they're coming out and say, and either endorsing Clinton or saying that Donald Trump is not fit to be president. Thank goodness right. for them, because the Republicans in Congress, they're just kissing his ass. They want the power. They want to be in power. They don't care that he could truly do enormous, irreparable damage to our country. So I applaud all these newspapers like the Arizona, out in Arizona, and the Dallas Times, and you know, and they're Houston and Detroit. Yeah, they're doing what's right for their country. Unlike an awful lot of people who are going to vote for this man, I was going to say too. Yes. But I, he's there's something wrong with him. He's he's extremely vengeful. He was up in the middle of the night, tweeting shit. I'm I'm sorry. I guess I don't know. No, anyway. I get worked up too. Well, no, but I mean, should I not use that language? Anyways, he was t tweeting stuff about. Uh, Miss Universe, you know, from tw from this whole brouhaha over what he said about her. And I'm thinking, dude, like, that's sleep dep deprivation. Does he not sleep? Does he just sit there at two in the morning thinking how he's going to get back at people and and they want to put him in the White House? Oh, I know. God. Dangerous. Uh, okay, hit that bell. Yes, Ariana must be unhappy with him, I suppose. Huffington Post has, has been, but of course, you know, sleep is our topic and how important it is. Hit that bell, Mark. That's not it. our topic. Our topic is the, the big cup. The week's top story is the debate. That's our topic. But that all, but all this is a result of the debate, certainly. You know, I mean, big time. You can't say anything wrong about him without him coming back at you like Machado, Miss Universe. He's vicious. He's Miss a Bennett. vicious, vindictive man. Exactly. She had no idea that Hillary was going to play that card at the end and use it as her, you know, uh, forced the resistance about her message about his misogyny and then she comments about it and then of course he can't stop he's back at her he's no and now he's Rosie. now he tweets out take a look at her sex tape i mean this guy is a sleaze bag he's a piece of shit and the idea and, that you know, the idea that he could be the president of the not just because i don't want him in there but we're the united we're america we're the united states how embarrassing that we would go from George Washington and, and Hamilton and Barack Obama to this piece of shit. 
because that's what he is. That's what U U S A Today basically comes out and really talks about that and 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 highlights you know Robert Gates recently coming out who was one of those bipartisan defense secretaries that said under a Republican president and a Democratic president back to back saying that basically this man you got to rent you can't there's nothing you can do it's too late he's gone he's off his rocker and then he comes back and attacks Gates. Who's given you know what eight more than eight years of his life to defend our freaking country? It's crazy, Mark. <clears throat> it is now the debates. That was going to be our big big story. You watched him. I'm guessing I watched him. Of course. And it was um, you know I'm not a, I'm not a bad like I, I'm not sitting there like salivating over him making a fool of himself. But he did, and he he rambled, and he it was just. It was so obvious to anybody with even who can even be mildly objective that he's a mess and she was well prepared and how could you possibly be prepared to be the president if you're if you're not willing to prepare for a debate for god's sake that's what i love this uh i don't know if you saw it i'll post it to the swiss podcast facebook right after this but a meme came out yesterday from a person named michelle vitaloni did you see that no one knows who she is i did see that but it's awesome. I won't say anymore. I'll just drive people to our Facebook page because basically putting it into perspective, first of all, they dragged him out and put him in a blue eye shadow and a, and a white hairdo and basically said, you know, just imagine a woman who showed up to a presidential debate unprepared, sniffing like a coke addict and interrupting her opponent 70 times. I mean, really think about it. It's crazy. Yes. And I'm sort of dreading the second one because I think Hopefully he'll lose that too, but I think this guy's. I think he's going to play as dirty as he possibly can, and he's going to. He's going to. They're begging. I read that his advisors are begging him not to bring up Clinton's infidelity and not to bring up Lewinsky because women in this country are going to say, "That's really low. You don't get. You can't get any lower than that." Well, <laughs> it's true, but let me say he already brought it up by his end excuse saying, "Oh, Hillary, your daughter's in the audience." I'm going to embarrass you. So we know what the fuck he's going to share. It's stuff we. It's like we didn't know. We went into an impeachment because of the activities of her husband, which are also the activities of her husband and her backing. We've had this discussion in our country years ago. There's no surprise. What I love in this debate is there are things I learned about Trump that Hillary taught me that I didn't know, like this lawsuit I referred to earlier from '73, where he and his dad were. Uh, you know, being dis- uh, we're disadvantaging black people trying oh, yeah, to get into that. their that was house. In the New York Times. Yeah, but some of it's still surprised, way more surprised than Mr. Clinton having sex with an intern, right? Right, so, and whatever. he also admitted he t- he sort of tacitly admitted that he doesn't pay taxes. If and a lot of people caught it if they were listening because it was tweeted out. Like, did he just say that he doesn't pay taxes? Yes, he did. Oh, yeah. He said oh, yeah. oh, he, he said that it, they yeah. would just be squandered if he did. And I've, you know, there's there's a lot of people who support him. They're sort of, they're they they they've convinced themselves that they need to. But this, if you don't pay taxes, that means you're not paying for veterans care. You're not paying for um, our government. You're not paying for anything that this country provides to you. So think about that when you applaud him or anybody else for not paying taxes. How can the, hey, com- the command? How can we have a commander in chief who doesn't? Who does who does nothing to fund the military? Yeah, we could go on and on. I'm going to hit the bell, but USA Today guys, read it. It tells you all these things. You do have a bell, and you had a gong. I want I, your gong back. Well, I found my bell under my gong. That's where I was hiding all these years. I so, love your gong. I'll bring my gong back. I'll bring it back. We ready for the big the hot top the hot potatoes? Yeah. We're calling them hot potato we one and hot the, potato two. Two hot potatoes. Mark's hot potato one. Hit it, Mark. <clears throat> And it's tied into this because we can't get away from it until the election's over. Um, approximately 20%, I read this online, approximately 20% of LGBT, let's just call us queer, voters are going to vote for Trump. And I put that on LGBTSR, the Facebook page, and a couple people were like, oh, that I don't believe that, and those are his people saying that. And I said, don't shoot the messenger, but it's I be- absolutely believe it's true. LGBT voters have voted Republican about 25 per, 20 to 25% in every election. We're not a mo, you know no we're we're not monolithic any more than black voters are. But um and I said, I, you know, I didn't want to I didn't want him coming back at me, but I said there's a lot of racist gay people. There really are. You go back into the 80s, 90s and you, you I would read about black people gay black men going to bars and getting harassed, getting not let in, getting carded. The idea that there aren't queer 
racist fascists is ridiculous. There are. And about 20% of them, hopefully a lot less, are going to vote for this, this monstrosity who's going to get in there and screw up everything that we have fought so hard for. He wants to appoint Supreme Court justices who he hopes will overturn Oberfell, Obergefell. I can never say it. I don't think that's going to happen. I think that marriage is equality is so ingrained that you what are you going to just divorce like 10 million people a million people um i don't think that's going to happen but that's what he wants to do and he's got rick santorum in his in his in his um you know at his table and he's got uh, ted cruz and they're out to comp erase the obama presidency and that includes every little shred that lgbt people have pe people have gained and he wants to he's already signed a pledge saying that he wants to um Pass the federal religious liberty law. So I'm just, that was my hot topic is that of all the elections that really are dangerous for us, this is a big one. I mean, this is, this isn't Mitt Romney. This is not a man who's sane. And the, if you vote for him, folks, if you're LGBTQI, any of that, if you're an ally, certainly too. Think about what you're gonna, what the consequences can be for us and for the people, other people. It's not just about me, and I, and I'll stop with that. But I can never say that enough. An election is not just about me. I'm not just voting for Hillary Clinton. I'm voting for all of the people who will come in with her, the people she she will put into position, and the people she will nominate to the Supreme Court. So even if I didn't like her, like all these, even if I had been brainwashed to think that she was untrustworthy and criminal. I still would vote for her because I want what she brings with her. And he's bringing some hell with him, so think about that. Well, and I'm going to make a quick comment. And, and, uh, okay, no, it's okay. We can do that. Bing, bing, bing. No, when you when you hit me out, I'm hitting myself back in. I'm back in the in, I love in that. The it's like here. teleportation. <laughs> it is. And we could go on and on. I'm going to have some happy news, my hot potato, which is hot potato number two. But well, hold on, lost my mic. But before I do that, I want to say you are so right. And, we could comment on all this, but all this interact, you know, after again, I, I encourage you to read the USA Today thing yesterday, guys, where it shows he's unfit because it's exactly your reasoning. Mark. Number one, doesn't he understand presidential power? You can't overturn the Supreme Court, you know, so that's going to take a little bit of work if that's really what you want to accomplish. Number two, my ex, uh, Charles, who since deceased was clean and sober and 12 steps for many years. And he said, Rick, you got to understand when he'd be a dick, I'd say to him, Mark, I said, why are you such a dick? He goes, you can be sober and still be a dick. <laughs> you know, I mean, it's, yeah. it's like for, for gay folks, you can still be stupid just because you're queer doesn't mean you're on my side, you know. Absolutely. So go for it 20 percent. But the others won't. And lastly, I want to say, um, I don't know. I want to say this. Hot potato number two. There you go. Ooh. Ooh it's so hot. Ring. Ow, ow, ow. <laughs> I dropped it. Oh, my God. Okay. <laughs> you are a robust ringer in the morning it's we're, back. I we're, back. About, we're, we're back we're back we're back fierce we're back and we're strong for our friends and listeners right. old and new and all that good stuff so some people that we've talked about on the show and talked with in the past in former incarnations of the twist because we used to call our show something else and we called it the twist jeffrey marsh making the news i know you'd like that gentleman remember when we oh yes Jeff i get from his emails holidays? he's such a great guy he has over a quarter billion views across social media He's the creator of the Global Trends, hashtag don't say that's so gay, and hashtag no time to hate myself. Well, he's uh, you know, often earned spots at the top binder lists and BuzzFeed and writes on Huffington Post. He came out with a book like you, Mark, Not To Be Stopped. It's called How To Be You, Stop Trying To Be Someone Else and Start Living Your Life. You know, he addresses binary. He addresses using the pronoun of they. Mm -hmm. He contends, sorry, someone's calling me. Um, she can wait. She must be watching the show. Must be upset with us, Mark. Right. You I think mean, that's what she? We've gone too far. <laughs> we've gone too far. So we'll, we'll just ignore her beat. But anyway, what happened is he wrote this book. He's contending that the pronouns of he and she will go away and be replaced with the pronoun they because that's where we're all headed for equality. Um, it's a great book. If you haven't read it, look it up. It's uh, it's just coming out. Uh, it's an interactive experience. It basically invites you to use the book to work through your feelings, to be positive. Jeffrey's a beautiful person who dresses as a woman but wears his beard and pride as well. Awesome. The other person I want to mention making news this week, uh, at the end of his 36th 
365 days of having sex once a day with a different guy. Oh, yes. And we that. almost, yeah, remember Misha. Yeah, Misha. Misha, Misha, Misha. Misha Batasian. He lives in Berlin now. Kind of making the news. He's concluded his experiment. It was called Save the Date. He's an artist, and he wanted to make it more a uh, social artistic piece. Sleeping with someone different in a year, uh, over the course of a year, someone different every day. And what I really liked about what he found by doing this, he said for the first time in his life, he cried while having sex. Wow. And so much came to him that, yeah, it's pretty amazing in that um, two things came to him. Number one was having sex with some of those HIV positive, which uh, I haven't gone too deep, but I presume he hadn't done outside of this, quote, piece of art. And he said it was amazing how many men came out to him and actually flew to sleep with him that were HIV positive and how he understood that experience more than ever. And also for the first time, he slept with a trans man. And this was a trans man who actually had, yeah, I know, this is cool. I've never heard this phrase. Have you ever heard what a dicklet is? No, it sounds, it sounds like a clitoris that's bigger or something. I don't know. It's a combination of a dick and a vagina. They call it a dicklet. Oh, wow. And so he learned, he learned about how our bodies could be sensitive and powerful at the same time. That was the quote I took from his writings. He's putting it all together, Mark, and he's doing a series of videos. You can find them online. What an interesting man, and what an interesting experience. And so here's what's really interesting. He comes back to Berlin. Um, he's Russian by birth. Comes back to Berlin, signs a lease on a place to live. They do a background check, find out he's the man that slept with 365 guys. <laughs> guys. Basically says, you can't live here. So he's a, he's a Facebook friend of mine, and he's been asking for a place to shack up for a while. I wonder if, he's, um, if he had sex with any disabled men. That would be interesting. He know. did. He did. I'm positive he did. I remember reading it. Um, but check it out, guys. Just Google search and Misha uh, Badasian, B A D A S Y A N. That's my hot potato on these two gentlemen. They're not, not only are they hot, but they're fabulous. Like you chose. You know me. I like to. I my topics are often going to be like 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 controversial. Yours. That was just beautiful. We're on for our, our final. Move on. Yeah, so folks know we're almost coming up on the end here. We have a final thoughts. This is our format. We got a final thoughts, and then you're going to have an end quote. If it's short enough, I will be using it um, on the website because I have this really cool um, plug in there where I can put a tweet in there, and you can just click on it at the top of the post and tweet it out to people. So we'll see. But um, anyways, my hot my um final thoughts are have to do with the African American Museum, um that just opened in Washington. I de absolutely want to go. I went to the Holocaust Museum shortly after it opened. It was extremely powerful and upsetting in a meaningful way. And I know this will be too. And I was reading, I read, it was reading a blog post by a white woman yesterday who was commenting on all of the racist pushback against this museum that she had seen, you know, white people saying, where's the white person's museum and as she points out how about every other fucking museum in the country is a white person's museum go to the met sometimes and these are all great museums but the point of of course is obvious you know uh, white people can go to pretty much any museum in the country and it's a white person's museum so <clears throat> and, you, and can you imagine them saying all of that crap about the holocaust museum they probably did but anyways, oh, I'm sure that she points out very effectively and truthfully that the African American Museum isn't just black people's history, it's my history because slavery in this country is you cannot separate slavery from the United States. It doesn't matter that it was officially ended. The the history of black people on this continent is entwined, you know, deeply entwined with the history of white people. And so my ancestors, I'm sure, owned slaves, and and it's my museum too. That's what she was trying to say, and that that's those are my final thoughts. Is to I just were the idea that we're post-racial is so ridiculous. You know that was that came up when Obama was first elected, and it was like, oh my God, we're going to finally get to stop talking race, about race. We will never be able to stop talking about race. I don't think because it's too deeply part of the United States of America and when you have people reacting viciously to a museum of all things if you don't want to go don't go but don't do that it's like when it's like it's well it's not because I think it's much more severe than what gay people have experienced but it's like when people say why is there a, why isn't there a straight pride parade well count your goddamn blessings you don't need one 
You know, you don't need one. We, we don't need Amen. a we don't need a white person's museum officially in Washington D.C. to tell the history of white people. Uh, we weren't enslaved for four hundred years, and so those are my final thoughts. I can't wait to go. I know it's going to be powerful. I know I'm going to cry, um, but I want to embrace it, and I hope other people do. And again, if you don't want to go don't go but look at your motives look at the reasons you if you have animosity toward this institution ask yourself why okay that's my final thought and now we go to the final quote you know um i'm going to encourage people one more time to go on to facebook the twist podcast because you'll see the longer quote version about trump um and thank you for those words mark but here's my final quote and it has to do with why I love your passion, love your friendship. I've had it for 30 years. And when we came back to the twist and you announced that we we're coming back, you basically said, you know, Rick and I have known each other almost 30 years. So it begged me for me to find a quote from 30 years ago. And in searching for a quote, I found a cool one from the movie, the fly. You remember the fly? Be afraid. Be very afraid. There you go. You get it. I knew you'd appreciate it. And it kind of ties in with everything we've talked about fear misogyny, racism, Trump, all those things. This is a quote from David Cronenberg on living in general and uh, basically uh, sums up what we're talking about here. Cronenberg is the director from The Fly, which came out 30 years ago, the year you and I met, Mark. Anyway, here's the quote, and I share it with you all. Everybody's a mad scientist, and life is their lab. We're all trying to experiment to find a way to live to solve problems, to fend off madness and chaos. End quote. I love that. And I've got a tweet. The first two sentences. It's perfect. Everybody, thank you so much for um, being patient with us. We're back. We're fierce. We're going to be here every week, unless unless there's some reason not to, like if we're traveling or something. But basically, it's going to be a weekly show, just like it used to be. We got the website, thetwistpodcast.com. We got Facebook page, The Twist Podcast. We, we're on Twitter, The Twist Podcast, and we're getting like lots of new followers every day. It's so exciting, Rick. Subscribe. You'll win prizes. We got the bell. We got a lot going on, Mark. Yep, and we'll be back. Every, by, by the way, these are going to go up on Sundays because this will be my weekend now, this and, this and my LGBT senior stuff. So Sunday, the podcast, are you listening? Have a great day, everybody. Bye. Thank you.